Welcome back to the Div 12 Resi's Waddle Park Animals Game Day Vlogs. We're currently positioned fifth on the ladder. Third and fourth, who are on equal points, have lost games. So if the Div 12 Resi's can get up in this week's vlog, we will jump up to third on the ladder. If you've been loving the series and you want to support the Div 12 Resi's, subscribe to the channel down below and any bit of support is greatly appreciated. Huge clash this week. We are taking on the Monash Uni Blues. We're playing in one of their players' 300th game. So they put on a twilight match down at Monash Uni. So we're going to be under lights. We're going to be in our pink clash kits, which we wore for the breast cancer round down at the zoo earlier this season. So it's just a massive opportunity for the Wattle Park animals to solidify ourselves in the finals race. And actually for the first time in a couple of weeks, start to make our way up the ladder. Oh, big game today. We're here at Monash University. Elite facilities, elite deck. We're under lights. Monash have a bloke playing his 300th game, so it's going to be a big occasion for the club. Um, in terms of the ladder, two teams above us on equal points have dropped games today. Monash are in the bottom four of our ladder, so it's a big opportunity to nab four points and jump up to third. I'm missing my shin pad sleeve. I don't know where it's gone. I haven't used tape. This is gonna be, I haven't shaved and I've just whacked this tape on and, and I think I put it in the wash and I don't know where it is. Congrats, mate. Uh, does that suit this tape? Our team? Your team yeah. No, not our team. Their team, yeah. So this was my favourite ground to play at because, you know, playing off half back uh, when I was playing at Monash, the wings are so wide that it's like three kicks to get to the other side, which means your man's not going to run with you the whole way. So you just have so much space to work in. Doss could kick 10 today, like comfortably. Like he's going to get that many chances with one on ones. Don't listen to what this bloke's got to say. He doesn't know anything about oh, footy. Rockstar energy again, brother. Hey, Any I, chance you can <laughs> come on time. We went from 30 to 10. Come on time. How's it 10 minutes? It's 10 minutes. What is it? Just the graphic graveyard shit. When are we supposed to be here? Yeah. Quarter past? Yeah. yeah. It's, right. it's good that I could come back for the second instalment of the Jared Aves Cup. Um, a real, um, real game that hits home for me. Um, obviously playing with Jara. Uh, I feel like I underperformed last time, kicking the one goal two. I really need to, really need to show up today. <laughs> Great ground. Lights look like they're gonna really give us a bit of pop as well. Um, twilight footy, so much fun. I feel so on. I feel like, I don't know, really confident with my game at the moment. I know it's thirds and, you know, I don't want to get too excited, but just, I know really confident in my footy at the moment. Can't wait to rip in. Favorite uh, time of the week for the boys. Uh, anyways, we're playing Monash. We played them earlier in the year, and we're coming off a win. But don't get complacent here. All right, they, they do have a 300 gamer, so have a little bit of respect for the fact they're going to want to make an occasion of it. We went out and played Oakley. We brought Dale Thomas. We wanted to make an occasion of it, and we all put in that extra 10%. Just go out there and know that these are the most important game we're going to play probably for the rest of the season. In terms of Lenny's got, Lenny's got his words. Let's go. Who kicked seven last week? <laughs> six. Six. six against Oakley. Six. Six. Eight against Monash when we last played them. That guy. So here's everybody on the field. <laughs> 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 but, you know, everybody's going to get from the back line all the way to Steve McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody hard line. The first quarter kicked off and uh, I've been feeling really confident out on the footy field recently. A long ball went inside 50, I sort of led to the pocket, circled back around and I could see that it was going to fly out the back of the pack. I took a nice chest mark and had a shot on goal early, but I missed it. The ball was incredibly pointy, and that's what I'm blaming my missed kick on. McDonald got into his into his uh, craft very early on. Uh, it was good to see him get his hands on the pill in the first, because then you know he's like setting himself up for a good day. Uh, even though he missed the set shot, I knew that wasn't going to be the last we we saw of him in that turn. Yeah, 
mate. After the after that set shot, I thought, oh, Dossie, you've got to you've got to find find the footy again here, mate. But before I could even finish saying that to myself, he's got a mark at the top of the square. I don't know if it was a block out, but what actually helped me was Cookson was just running into position because he was trying to read the footy and he accidentally put a screen on my defender. So I got some separation because Cookson got in the way, gave me a bit of a gap and gave me an opportunity to take the mark. So I was very thankful for the young King Cookson in that instant. Another ball went deep inside 50 and I was running to jump up at the footy and I just got dragged off it. And it was one of those ones where if they don't pay it, you're frustrated as a forward. But if they do pay it, you're frustrated as a defender. So even when they're trying to hold Dossie off the footy, they can't they can't stop the man. Getting his second goal in that term, um, really shifting the momentum towards us early on. I was able to convert and the Wattle Park animals were away in this big occasion, Twilight Footy at Monash University. Uh, we've got a bit of a gap and we've started pretty strongly. 2-1, probably should have had four. You have two? Yeah. Oh yeah, you do have two. Far out. Yeah. It's good though. One on one, I feel confident. I'm up against two big blokes. How are you feeling? <sighs> chest, Can't breathe. chest hurt, yeah. I know the feeling. Yeah. It's alright. So I've kicked Dossie one, had a couple of shots. Really well I've through. played 50 games of footy here. The team that wins every single time here is the team that uses their skills well. All right, when we play at the water, uh, when, when we play at Water Park, our home ground, which is half the size of this, we run and gun because we know we can get deep entries. We can't run and gun from the centre of the ground here because from here to deep entries is 80 metres. So if you can kick 80 metres, go ahead. But we can't kick 80 metres. So let's take our time, use our skills, kick the 30, kick the 30, and then get it long and deep to DOS. All right, run up. If you don't, not that you feel that first lead, it doesn't come to you. Run out and run back to the goal line and go again, all right? But don't run up and then just hover over there and be like, I can just take a chest mark. I can just outbody my opponent because you're not going to. It never happens. If it does, it's a fucking miracle. Like, we all clap and applaud that. It's not going to happen in 10 times out of 10. So don't go up and be like, ah, oh, I'll just see you. Put on my head, put on my head. It doesn't work like that, all right? So go up and then it's a shoot back and go again, all right? Bit of an arm wrestle in the second quarter. Vinny Briganti, who is a half-backer, a wingman. He's played midfield at times, was in the forward line because he was under the weather. He picked it up in the centre square, burst through the 50, took on a couple, and slotted a beautiful snag for us to kick off the second term. Yeah, Vinny Briganti uh, weaving around like he's driving down the Great Ocean Road, just uh, in one way, out the other. It was uh, really good to have him play down forward. Even though he was a little bit crook, uh, he still had... Plenty of pace about him. Cookson, nice little bump, gets involved. Smithy picks up, running to the pocket. As I'm watching, I thought, well, Smithy's either going to snap this through the big sticks, or if he snaps and it goes across the face, I could probably follow it in, stand out the back, and potentially get a mark. So that's what I did. And Smithy hits me on the chest, and I spoke to him at half time, and he said, I saw your back shoulder, so I kicked it to you. You know, one of the best footy IQs um, Smithy has, so I actually probably do back him in um, he spotted me out the back I took an uncontested mark went back and slotted the goal I think I've had five shots already to start this game I kicked eight against Monash the last time we played them so I've kicked 11 goals in six quarters of playing against them and um, I felt absolutely on fire but it was probably from that point onwards where the clamp was put on me <laughs> And it was very tough going for the remainder of the match. With a chest mark, and then we did our little handshake, a little pew pew pew. Then we, we do need to work on it a little bit, get it a bit more slick, but it was good to, it's good to celebrate with the boy. Shrey was awesome. Shrey almost took a couple of mark of the years. He went for a couple of hangers straight away in this game, which was something that I've never seen before. But he was lively. He had 13 touches. He was in and around it. He was physical when he needs to be, which is what I love about Shrey. He can get in. He can get a bit dirty. He can put a bit of body on. He's quite selfless when he plays for a Schrader aid. So he was up and about. Gets a little bit overzealous in the in the push and shoves, though. He, on this occasion, he overstepped the mark. He was ragdolling one of their blokes who was getting into one of our blokes. Um, and then when he tried to pull him, the guy went limp and went to the ground. It made it look really bad. From my point of view, I was like, why is Schrader throwing people to the ground? And then it caused a fracker. They got 25 metres and kicked a goal. That's what we love about Trey. He'll fly the flag for his teammates. He'll get into the nitty and gritty. And um, that's the role that he plays for us. And that's what we love.
But that wasn't the only fracker that happened in the second term. Our fearless leader and our, our ruckman, Checkers, got booted into the back. And it was a weird one where I've never seen that on the footy field. Checkers was lying on the ground. Him and his opponent were going at it a little bit. Checkers is on the ground and this guy just like kicks the absolute shit out of Checkers. A man who I've never seen white line fever from, Kane McDonald, comes storming from the top of the goal square to the melee and he's he's just hurling just words at the umpire. He's kicked him! How have you not seen it? Ah, oh, this is disgraceful! And I was I was getting a little bit fizzed up. I'm like, I might have to go and uh, go into bat for Dossie here. But uh, young King Cookson got there before Dossie could, so thank God, uh, thank God Austin was there. Dan's an absolute superstar in defence. He always racks it up, plays that Tom Stewart role, but he gets complimented pretty well with Bailey McCabe, who, once again, talk about a, a fix-it man who can go anywhere for us. Like, you can't spell backline without Dan and Bailey, but I, I know you can. But <laughs> I know you can, but it's in the thirds, there's two blokes that really hold up the back six. And it's Dan Thorson, the toe ball, and Big Baz McCabe. Was awesome. Took some good intercept marks. Used it pretty well off the back line. He's got speed, Baz, and he's got a big frame. And when he uses both those assets, he's a tough man to stop. Gee whiz, if this isn't uh, hung up in the Louvre, I don't know what will be. Big Cookson takes a clunky and a half. I was crumbing the clunk, and I thought, that was a, that was a good little view there. But I knew the play wasn't over. Ran to where I thought he was going to kick the footy. Dossie works his defender under the ball, uh, gets out the back. I get in Dossie's vision. He splits the defenders. I turn around thinking, shit, I could have a snap here. But then I'm uh, met by two Monash Blues defenders, and I thought, how are we going to get out of this? But I held on to the ball for the right amount of time, flicked it out to Jackie Lindros, who converted the big six-pointer. And Dossie absolutely loved that moment. Truly, half time, really good contest, lead by six points. Um, yeah, they're a bit niggly. They're going after a few of us, which is quite funny. Check has got one. Well, he got the boot in the back while he was on the ground, which was questionable. But besides that, really good contest, really even contest. And um, yeah, gonna have to keep chipping away, keep chipping away. But I think we'll be able to overrun them in this last quarter. We've just got to be mindful of the balance of our field. Um, some blokes are getting stuck on the pine that we need on the ground as often as possible. So, big second half and hopefully we can win our third in a row. Hey guys, halftime report with Will. It's getting a bit spicy out there. A lot of, uh, a lot of beef between uh, the blues and the, the pinks today. Don't you think everyone should just be friends? Uh, everyone just needs to calm down. At the end of the day, it's third football. Like, we're not here to play for sheep stations, hats. We're here to just have a bit of fun, get the derby for puns, but why, why are we all punching each other? Why are we all punching each other? It's just too for long. Too for long. Um, yeah, just... It's not play slow footy, but it's just play that smart footy. And the, the ways you can help is, yeah, voice, always voice, always. And you're behind a guy who's got the ball, and you see the options, because he, sometimes your eyes are just tunneled. You get the ball and go, oh, I'm going straight to that wing, but there might be an option in that wing. So if you're behind a bloke, don't be afraid to say, hey, Forza's over there, or so-and-so's over there. So, you know, be, be a bit of a playmaker if you're behind the footy. And if you're in front of the footy and you think you're in space, the amount loud, like the amount of the shit out of it. A couple of times, I think Shrey, I saw the other wing and I was like, Shrey, you've got this and he didn't use his voice at all. And I was like, well, how are they going to know you've got 40 metres space if he can't hear you? He's not looking at you. But, no, nah, good footy, good stuff. Everyone knows the game plan. Go out there, same shit, we reset. The score's pretty even, we reset. I think Jarrah or Michael kicked the ball into me. I was getting manhandled in the contest. I think you see my... Sh I've got bruises up and down my arms. My shirt was getting stretched and tugged. Because they were occupied on me, they left Vinny Briganti at the back, so the ball got spoiled. Went out to Vinny, and he snapped a nice little banana from the pocket, which was awesome. So up and about for that, because it was so needed. We needed the goal. So that felt good from my point of view, to still have an impact, even though um, I was getting well held at that stage. Vinny got on the end of another one, took a mark in the goal square, kicked his third for the afternoon. So the move of Vinny forward to give us a bit of pace and a little bit of craft was unbelievable. Super exciting and it's something we can look at 
for the remainder of the season. I think Michael Allen's probably got the least amount of uh, body weight on him, but he attacks the football harder than anyone in his team. Michael Allen was working up and down the wing the whole time. There's so many times where Michael might not get a disposal, but he'll do one chase, get a hand in, laser tackle, bump someone off it, puts a bit of pressure. If we had everyone who competed and was so intense around the footy as Mick Allen, uh, we'd have a pretty complete lineup. Found myself free at the top of the goal square, just waiting for the footy. Jackie Lindros had taken a big clunky. Not every kick is perfect. <laughs> this one was one of them. But luckily, Dossie found his way on the end of the footy, tapped it across to me. I got some sort of handball out to Smithy, uh, and Smithy wound himself onto his right foot. Because Tails was still at the back, I just tried to spike it over the top to him. It landed out the back. Tails grabbed it. Hambled off to Smithy, we kicked one, and that 20 point gap was enough to feel pretty confident going into the last quarter. It was close the whole start of the third term, the first, I'd say 15 minutes close, and then they broke away with a couple goals from this great man. <laughs> he kicked two in the term, um, and then unfortunately got dragged off. Yeah, so apparently if you kick two, you get pulled. That's probably my um, quietest quarter for a long time. But two or three occasions with contests that I was involved in, we got snags out of. I'll fucking take that every day of the week. We needed to get on top of it. We needed to have a quarter where we kicked three or four. Um, it's one where I was super quiet, couldn't get near it. My defender's holding me well. But we are able to get goals out of contests that I was it's, in and around. It's not an instant win. It's, it's push body, it's push body, and then it's lead. Yeah. When we have the footy, let's give our forwards the time to work, get off their man. We just need to come over the points, all right? We need to win this by 40 goals. It's not going to happen. But just, we had a few times maybe coming out of defence, no one in particular, just that this, but like people leading for balls here. Yeah. Come out here. Then if it spills off your hands, it's yeah. going out of bounds. It wastes another minute. Yeah. All right, just small things like that that, that yeah. just save time. We'll go out, 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 and then in. Make sense? We play yeah. the boundary out of defence, don't play down the middle out of defence. That's when we lose one goal, two goal, three goal. We look at the score like, yeah. fuck, it's five minutes in when the scores are even, all right? Bit of an arm wrestle to start the last term. Um, they kicked one early. Their whole crowd got up and about. We haven't really had a game where we have a big Wattle Park crowd. Like we had a big crowd at Oakley, but they were all going against us at Monash on the weekend, but we were the away team and they were all going against us. So I'd love to see the Div 12 Resis support one game where they all turn out and they get around us. Monash kicked one early in the last. They're getting up and about. They're probably two and a half goals down. A little bit of nerves crept in, but I felt like Every time there was a slight arm wrestle, we'd end up grabbing the ascendancy back and getting back on top. So I knew that we could we could do that, but we just probably needed one settler. It was a weird one. I felt like we were on top in that last quarter. Like we did have the lead. Um, they were fighting back, but one tactic they just couldn't get around was uh, Austin Cookson's. Beautiful right peg. Just like he did last week, the ball goes long and the young King cooks it, takes a valuable mark late in the game, goes back off his mark and slots it. And when he kicked that, it was like, man, this is deja vu. This is what he did last week for us. And um, Cookson once again bobs up when we need him and finishes strongly. The poor old, poor old Doss man was getting um, getting manhandled all game. Uh, being the deepest forward, he was always going to have a few troubles with his direct opponents uh, in the fourth quarter. Ball comes in, and this bloke is just just all over him like stink on a monkey. Now, I was having a bit of a tough go of it in the second half. I had um, a couple of blokes tightly clamped to me, and... Anytime I went near it, I was getting manhandled. Like, my jumper was getting stretched. My arm has bruises all over it. I was getting grabbed and tugged and pushed and shoved. And in all instances, you could probably pay a free. But in thirds, you're probably not going to pay many. But you probably could and would pay a couple. There was one in particular in the last quarter. I got just completely shoved out of it in the back. No free kick. But then the ball comes in. I think Cook might have kicked it to me. Puts it up. 
I'm just about to try and get to the footy. I'm getting held off it. And I lowered my colours. I turned into Will Taylor from South Melbourne. I turned into vintage Richo. I turned into Jesse Hogan with my demonstrative attitude. And I just yelled, he's holding me. (laughs) This bloke is just all over Dossie. And the whistle hasn't been blown. And all I could ask, all I could ask was that it wasn't another South Melbourne incident. But this umpire was very good, gave Dossie the free kick. uh, And I got very up and about for that free kick. Fully, fully sooked it up, fully cracked the sads and got rewarded. (laughs) So to all the uh, aspiring forwards out there, cry, cry to the umpire and you'll get rewarded. Look, the ump had probably missed seven or eight and he finally rewarded me with that one. And um, I probably didn't deserve the goal because I cried, I cried about it. So um, missed the set shot and probably got my just desserts for sooking it up. But um, man, it, it is frustrating. I now have a lot of sympathy for key forwards when you're getting clawed and grabbed and you just want to run and have a bit of a jump at the footy. Um, yeah, it, it can be quite annoying. Man, arm wrestle through the first half. Pretty win in the end. Um, became a decoy in the end there, which I didn't like. I, I want the foot in my hands, but celebrating old mate's 300 game. They played so well for him. They put in a good shift, and um, yeah, it's a great contest. We had some soldiers out this week and knew that we would probably have to grit it out. Big occasion for them as well. Um, yeah, boys worked hard, got the chockies, and the fixture opens up a tiny bit for us now. So um, that was the one we needed to bank, and we did in the end. So happy days. Cold, cold night, hammies were on ice. I can't move my fingers. Fingers are cold. Come away with four points. It's a good day. Good day. I was pro- quite, pretty, you get pretty frustrated at half time. Yeah, we should have been up by more, but you know, that's, that's how the story goes, isn't it? Classic Waddle Park. That's us. We'll see you next week, mate. So there you have it, guys. The Waddle Park Animals win their third game in a row. We are now up to third on the ladder and we're building slowly but surely into this season. We've got some big games coming up to finish off the season. We're going to rotate some fun guests through. Um, and it should be an exciting end to the season as we push to try and solidify ourselves in the finals. Guys, we really appreciate all the support. We appreciate everyone tuning in to the Dip 12 Resi's Wattle Park season. And we'll catch you for some more content very, very soon. Cheers, guys. Cheers.